This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And it is crunch time. This is 2 o'clock in the morning on Christmas Eve. And I have to cook Christmas dinner. Usually I take four days to do this. But both my sister and brother-in-law are in the hospital. I've been running across looking after their animals as well as trying to get everything here ready and I have fallen woefully behind. And I suspect many of you have done the same. For some, this is going to be your first Christmas dinner that you have ever had to cook. Because Grandma ain't here. Well, how do you do it? Well, we're going to tell you. Turkey. Right now, it should be thawed because you're going to cook it today. If it ain't thawed, put it in the bathtub right now. Get this thing soft. Okay? And, second thing, what is your menu? Write it out. We're going to have turkey, dressing, dill deer potato salad, sweet potato souffle, succotash, salad, pineapple, tea, coffee, and I'm going to make, instead of the usual Claxton fruitcake, which I cannot buy this year, some of my Hovey's health bread. And so we'll have that in lieu of fruitcake. So that is the menu. We've already managed to do a little bit. We've got our pecans cracked and shelled. Done. Alright. Now, if you've not done this, and you can only buy the pecans in the shell from organizations like this, have hubby or somebody go down and get you a nutcracker. This is what one looks like, or something similar. And put your kid to cracking these nuts, so you have them done. So these don't have to be refrigerated and take up valuable refrigeration space. Uh, they can be stored anywhere in the kitchen right now. So, that being done, what next? We're not going to put the turkey in yet. This is a small turkey. It's not going to take that long to cook. If you have a huge one, well, you might. But we'll get around to that. And if you have to, right now, you can go back. And on day number three of my four days of Christmas cooking is where I show you exactly how to cook a turkey. So you can see that right now. And we're going to make our bread products for the dressing. These include egg bread and a hoe cake. Also, I have videos about how to do that on day one of Christmas cooking. So we're going to put that together, get that in the stove, and then start on things like the sweet potato peeling and the potato peeling so we can get those started and also put half a dozen eggs on the stove. We cook as many things on top of the stove right now so we don't take up valuable eye space Christmas Day. There are a few things that need to be cooked and warmed on Christmas Day, and this will take all the stove space that you've got. Now about your house stuff. Is this what your kitchen table looks like right now? And you're going to serve dinner on it? Well, obviously some changes need to be made. And we're going to work these in as we cook. Likewise, the living room, where people are actually going to be sitting. Well, I have done some mucking out here. We have some of it cleaned and looking reasonably decent. At least one corner of it. But, still much to do. And these are going to be worked in whilst things are cooking. Does your sink look something like this? Well, put somebody on it because you're going to need the sink space. Plus, uh, we're going to do a lot of cooking and there's going to be a lot of dishwashing. Uh, you may notice those rubber gloves on top of the sink. Use them. Uh, you'll have your hands in water all day long today and tomorrow. And anybody's hands exposed to this much dishwashing is going to crack them. So, uh, use your gloves at the outset and save your hands. For Hovey's Health Bread, we're chopping up a half a cup of cranberries and half a cup of raisins. And the base of the health bread is whole wheat flour. 
and to that I've added a teaspoon full of baking powder and a teaspoon full of salt and it starts off uh, a good recipe is uh, starting with four cups of whole wheat okay now this is getting about right here and next and next we'll add a cup of chopped uh, black walnuts nuts of all sorts are expensive this year and if you have nuts left over you can put them in a plastic bag and freeze them and they'll keep for years that way okay there are the nuts now we cut in half a stick of butter and by cutting in I mean taking the cube of butter and actually taking a knife and cutting little pieces out of it and then mixing it with little pieces instead of melting uh, into the flour we've added our cut butter and now we're going to add and mix the rest of the dry ingredients Now noticeably missing from this is any sugar and there is no sugar in this recipe. You do get sweetness from the cranberries and the raisins and we are going to add um, about a quarter cup of honey mixed with milk. You know, three large eggs and enough milk to make a pourable batter. This is a very free form recipe. This could be buttermilk. Uh, I'm using skim milk right now. Because that's what I drink and what I have in the house. Could be sour milk even. You could also use any number of fruits in here. If you wanted the a, a little more Christmassy. Uh, you could add any of the candied fruits that are typically put in fruit cakes, or all of them, if you wished. And it'll turn out well. The nuts, any nuts will do. Any dried fruits will do. Uh, apricots do well in this. Dates do well. Almost right. If you ran out of milk, you could use a little water. Whatever you do to make it work. All right, now that's that's about right. So now we put this in a pan and put it in the oven at 350 degrees. And we have our first part of Christmas cooking actually cooking. Now we have two pans of Hobie's Health Bread. It would have been too thick had I put it all in that single square pan. So we're making a smaller one, which will, of course, cook off and come off earlier. So those are going in the oven at 350 degrees. Before we get started, uh, this is what our Hobie's Health Bread looks like. And as you see, it's quite firm. So that's exactly how you want it. Round, separating from the edges here. So we'll not take it up quite yet. It's still a bit hot. And when you handle a frying pan, make sure you do it with a dry dishcloth. Otherwise, the steam will burn your hands. I'm unable to find my traditional yellow coarse ground cornmeal here like we used to produce uh, on our own mill but so I'm using what we've got some of which is double acting that means it has both baking soda and baking powder in it so this will Wind up that, it's one cup. We're going to make a four cup recipe. Two 
two and four. And this is basically a case of using what you got to do what you need to do. I am going to add a little baking powder to this. The recipe for southern pan dressing calls for cornbread as well as hoe cake. Well, hoe cake is nothing more than biscuit. And we have some pre-made biscuit. This is a small turkey. So all this cornbread won't be necessary and these biscuits should be adequate. That mix is done. What makes this egg bread is two eggs. And I also need to add a teaspoonful of salt. I should have added with the dry and a teaspoonful of sugar which I will add now. We need a little oil and canola oil some liquid any milk will do, even spoil. Okay, that's still too dry. Just a little more. As we're finishing. If you didn't have milk, uh, a little water would do would have done as well. Okay, we pour this in a greased cast iron frying pan and we proceed to bake it. Okay. So now we have the cornbread in the oven and we're going to start peeling on our sweet potatoes for the sweet potatoes to fly and our Irish potatoes and we're going to do nearly four pounds of Irish potatoes for the dill deer potato salad and get these started uh, while the bread is cooking. Now after we get the breads out of the oven is when we'll actually start on cooking the turkey itself. Because we'll have to move the racks and make more space in the oven so that tall turkey in its pan will actually fit. But we'll get that done next. Uh, I'm going to have to start editing and posting this video so it'll do you some good today. But if you want to see what's going on, go back to my four days of Christmas cooking, Hovey, H O V E Y Smith, and you will see the details right now on how I cook a Christmas turkey as well as the rest of these accessory items. We have about reached the climactic moment here putting the turkey in the oven. Now the recommended cooking time for a turkey this size is two and three quarter to three hours. Okay, It is now 11, 11 or thereabouts, an auspicious time. And we're about to tin it up and put it in. We have three stalks of celery on the inside and approximately a cup and a half of water. This particular turkey comes with a gravy packet, which we'll make up for a friend, but I'll do the traditional southern giblet gravy, which we also show in our video. So now we're going to tin it up, close it up, and put it in the oven. But now this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time.